Hello and welcome back to another Comet 998 Rollway Reviews video. Today we have a new release while well, off the time of filming. I hope to get this video out a little bit earlier than all the others so you may notice this. Uh, the layout may look slightly a bit different. The stuff that's on it may be slightly different to the next upload. But it's purely because this has been pushed forward because of what it is. And this time we've got the on-track model Sprinter. track has finally released a brand new sprinter model uh, today is currently raining so you may hear some of the rain in the background not too sure if you will but this is just around the morning if you hear thunder and stuff like that I'll try to cut, uh, get as much cut out as possible I had to wait for the box to slightly dry because it can uh, uh, I walk through the rain with it um, so this one is pack number 11a 7001 the fleet leader Sir Robert Sir Hu sorry Sir Hubert Offerman and PTC Teal, so the original livery, the original test livery of the um, Sprinters, the Victorian Railway Sprinters. So we're going to, this is taking the new design. It will take in th uh, three sections. It will take in a few sections. First part will be unboxing. I have actually got um, Sonic Blast X2000. Also has one of these, and I have his model just here. It's just that way in the camera. Um, I will have it during the. Um, table shots but I'm only going to unbox this my own one this is my uh, my particular one so let's go again to the box so it slides off like majority of Australian models you know, it's meant to slide off um, come to nothing we can discard the box I'm just going to leave it there um, so inside we have this blank bit of stuff what are they uh, they are the Name plate, name uh, location boards, which are upside down. Sorry, all the locations uh, that we can uh, put into the um, boards uh, ourselves, so we can pick uh, some of which these locations the train has never gone to. You can be funny and put those on, but yep. So just put those away. Um, now the little accessories section here. Uh, I assume it's passengers. I assume they're passengers. It doesn't look like the crew. I assume they're passengers that we can put inside if we want to, and then take off the foam. And well, can't really see much here, but there she is in the original PCC test livery. I just pull on the packaging and bring out the whole plastic thing because I am a logical person apparently. Just pull it out. Uh, shoot. This is the main problem is that it's been stated that they are very, very delicate. So I'm going to try to keep everything on camera. Apologies if I move anything out. I'm just going to put the pincer to the side. And with that, I'm going to quickly get this packed up and then we're going to get some nice close ups of both models. There are no instructions in the box from what I can see. I don't think they give out instructions on many of Australian models uh, except precision and trainer armor. So. Yeah, uh, there aren't really any instructions, I think. Yeah, not what well, I see. So yeah, uh, I'm going to move the camera about. I'm going to move the box, uh, clean up the boxes. I'm going to get the uh, Sunny Blaster X2000s one out of its box. And I'm going to set them up. I'll set them up to take a look. Um, the styling bit of this video will be my one only. Because um, that's the point of this video. It's purely based on my model. But the other one's just as an extra. So I'll... Cut it here and what I'll be right back. I say? It looks nice, doesn't it? So I'm going to do this first part. Is the first, I'm changing this about a little bit because I'm still trialing this new setup thing. Um, this first part will be first impressions, followed by the history, followed by a detailed look. Sorry, no, wait. Followed by, sorry, after the history will be features, detailed look, and then running. So, um, first impressions, it looks very, very, very nice, I must admit. It's my first proper passenger a Victorian in my fleet, so it's got a very hard task up ahead of it. It's, it looks very, very nice. They kept it well scaled to the original detail. Couplings are—they uh, aren't real. They're not 
real actual dovetail or whatever they can I forgot they what they called them, but Schaffensberg or something. Uh, but they aren't real; they're just cosmetic. Uh, um, but you can t pill, take them out and put a um, KD onto it uh, to couple up to other units. Anyhow, let's go. And let's go and get the other one out, and let's go and. Right, so uh, find so out I usually try them. to post edit this part in, but I am not going to do that this time. So as we can see, we've got the two now sitting on the shot. We're, my one, which is in the PTC to be on this side is 7001 the Sony Plus X2000s is that one down there uh, on the right which is um, 7004 in the more modern Mark III livery so they pretty much look somewhat the same uh, they pretty much are the same except my one has it's dependent on the era so for example like Sony Plus X2000s have sandboxes fitted of which mine doesn't so uh, but mine has the sliding windows fitted, which Sony Brothers doesn't. It's a full window, so it's dependent on the era. But anyhow, onto its history, because that's what this part is. Um, so they were built by Ginnanen in Broad Meadows um, for V-Line in between 1993 and 1995. So that makes them... Um, oh Jesus, um, this is what happens when I have to think on the spot about, yeah, whatever. Anyhow, um, so there were 22 of them built uh, in the fleet, which is the last one was 7022, uh, with the, uh, of which one has been scrapped already due to an accident in its, uh, in its earlier life. Which meant that the frames, so it had a collision face on at, uh, at Southern Cross Station into the buffers and it, its frames cracked. Which meant pretty much you couldn't, you, it could be salvaged, but technically it would be very hard to salvage. So they are 6,000, uh, sorry, that seems a bit too powerful for them. They're, they are 630 horsepower units powered by two. Uh, two uh, traction motors, maximum speed of 130 kilometers an hour. So, yeah, they currently find most of their service on the Seymour line. Yes, ma majority of the services are, uh, they operate on the Seymour line, and yeah, every so often we'll see them running a Kyneton service, a Wyndham Vale service. A Traralgon service and sometimes a Geelong service, so they kept for shorter distance operation. Oh, and also the um, that's one thing they also operate the line the Stony Point line. Yeah, so that's a bit on their history. I'm really going very br brief this time because I haven't done this in quite a bit. I I'm not used to, fully used to it. But yeah, so let's get. Let's go and have a look at some of the features they so have. I was going to do a part about features. I've just noticed that I there isn't anything written about the, the particular features in it, so I can't actually fully read it out. So we're going to go straight to the details, the cl close look up of them. So I've zoomed the camera nicely. Um, so on track models have really gone into detail to show the era of these models. For example, like this one here, uh, the one on the left has the correct style windows for that particular era, which is the sliding windows, against the one on the right. Yes, the one on the right, which has the plug windows. Uh, Untrack models have also chosen to make scale replicas of the mirrors, as you can see on the sides. They are very, very delicate. They are very easy to bend, and bend. But they also, you can also flip them around and close them up. As I think on one, I think on this end they have. Yeah, I, this end I think my on the one on the left now. Sorry, the one on the right, in the opposing direction, is now got it um, pushed in. They have very crisp paint jobs. They look fantastic, I must, uh, I must admit. The detail is tops. The wiper mm -hmm. looks like a wiper. I just got a phone call, annoyingly. Um, so, the windows are nice and clear. Uh, they've got internal lighting. Uh, and cab lighting. Uh, directional headlights and all that sort of stuff 
which means uh, they are very very high detail models they are also very very fragile so there is a restriction on the box that says they are for 14 and up which I do this for once I do fully believe that it's it is a good thing to follow because of how detailed they are so anyhow I suppose we should so we're gonna for the running section we're gonna put my one on the track and get that one going first you won't see me put the other one on because the vi the video is mainly based on the one on one of them. Uh, so I'm going to do the video based on my one, and then you're going you're to see for the first time ever we're going to have the, mo the trains running about with two of the same models running about. That's for the first time ever on this channel. We're going to have two of the same tra uh, trains running on both tracks instead of um, having one train running and then having the other one uh, having some sort of random train just to fill up the gaps. So off the layout and. Let's take a look at how she operates. Right, so here we are on the layout again. I've had to clean up a few stuff because they've been there's things everywhere at the moment. I'll be back in one second. Right after that, sorry about that. Background noise. So here's my one. I will have it running on the outer loop. I will have Malcolm. Sorry, yeah, Malcolm's one running on the inner loop. Uh, that, but that's after I start this going first. So first things first, let's make sure it actually operates in both directions. So I'm going to send it away from the camera first. That's very weird. I don't know why on the camera it looks like the, all my lights are working or on, but they're not. They are, it's, hmm, that's interesting. Only the, um, light, uh, the tail lights are actually on, but I don't know why it looks, uh, it's seeing that everything's on. In vice direction. There we go. Oh, I was wrong. Do it. No, that is slightly a cap light. You can't really see the internal lights from here at the moment because they're inside, obviously. So um, I'm gonna get the other one on. I'm gonna get the shot of this on uh, departing, and then let's get some shots of her rolling about. And then we can have a proper look of it, so lighting and all that sort of stuff. And then seemingly this will be the running shots because there isn't really anything I can put on them. There's no logo that can actually put them. So this is the running shots. So, and then I'll cut off the video after this. I'm going to keep this one nice and quick. Well, I say quick, it's already gone for about uh, 15 minutes already. About that. I'm trying to, I forgot what my SD card was originally, but about 15 minutes. So let's get uh, the running shots and then I'll write out my conclusion. That was great timing. So we've got 15, 10 seconds to go before um, they finish the this direction running because I've set them both going in a different direction because I thought it was logical. I'm going to bring them both. There we go. Now I'm going to bring them both up into the, uh, in front of the camera. So as you can see, they're a little bit noisy, but I think over time it should be able to. It should get quieter. And supposedly, we're going to start this off again, this time in the opposing direction. I might get a few extra shots. Yeah, as usual, we've done that. So, let's get rock and rolling.
Kann ich jetzt einen Schatz? Well, with that, I've got... There we go. Uh, we've now finished the running in. Seemingly, the other one has died, but, only, but I don't really mind too much. Uh, seemingly, it's having its own issues. I think the track is having problems at the moment. I think the controller's um, why I may have got pulled when I was coming back into the layout. So, it's a very nice one, I must admit. So, uh, I suppose I'm going to make the conclusion now. Um, so, yes, it's very, very nice. It's very heavily detailed, which is the main issue with it. Its motor seems quite noisy. I think half of the batch was noisy motors and the other half wasn't. So, yeah, it's been, uh, after, I think it was about a two-year wait since they were meant to be released. Um, they're very, very nice models uh, to have. Uh, and I would say that it's a good companion to your fleet, depending if um, you're in this sort of area. So I'm going to get uh, one of our departure shop uh, before the end of this video. So this will be my final words. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope to see you all in my later videos. Goodbye.